This is a quick tutorial on how to use Deep Sky Stacker to stack astro images. We have some test images of M42. We've got nine of them at, I think we took 60 seconds for those, and then these were two at five seconds. Clearly, the light pollution is markedly less in those. So, the way it's done first is to select those images and just drag them and drop them onto the deep sky stacker window now it talks about light frames and what have you these are light frames that means it's the frame with the actual data information of the image that we want to process dark frames flats and bias and so on is a complicated issue which we'll look at another time so there we go and it pops the images in to the window if you click on each one it will display the image so you can check that you haven't included a dodgy one that's blurred or star trailed in the process now another quite useful technique is to say compute offsets this takes a little bit of time so we'll we'll put a break in the video or we'll speed it up but if we say compute offsets off it goes and starts doing some weird and wonderful thing what it's doing is it's looking at all the, all the images uh, looking at the shapes of the stars are they nice and round or are they trailed um, are they elongated oblong funny looking things or are they nice and circular it looks at the background so if a cloud passed by one image you didn't notice it would throw up a reading uh, so you can remove that from the list but it's also just a check that it's your images are worth processing quite often it's far better if you only had two good images out of ten to process just the two and throw the eight away if you if you include the the bad ones then you're going to get a an overall not so good result so we'll just wait for that to finish okay and it's done now you might notice there's a whole lot of files it's created if we open one up you can have a look it's actually gone through and made measurements on every single star out of a group of how many is it done goes on forever um where's the number here there we are 393 394 so it's looked at 394 stars you can limit the number of stars it looks at by a menu option somewhere but it is it, worked out the coordinates and the, the axes and whether it's round zone but it all gets too complicated don't worry about that but here is the score now click the score and it'll put them into order so it thinks that the one with the best score is number 6943 which is that one so if we have a look at that focus on a given star and then look at the worst one you can see the star is a little bit bigger looking at that star there the best one definitely a tighter star uh, but also important are these things here these are the offsets in X and Y so it tells you how images have shifted and if we put them into order of how we took them which is that way we can see that the, it's drifted in the x value over the entire operation it's not got more than 1.7 pixels off to the side um, and it's actually come back again i think what it does is it looks at the score that's the best score which was that one there yes that's the one it's taken with the, the zero um, so back to the sequence there so the one with the zero is the best one and then it compares everything else relative to that so we've gone in the x direction we've drifted off in the one of them only is has a negative so there is an overall drift in the x and the y has gone negative positive positive negative so the y has gone backwards and forwards all over the place so that 9.36 
Um, I'm suspecting that's the right ascension uh, with periodic error which is eccentricities in the wheels it tends to wander off and then come back and wander off and come back declination tends to drift usually just in one direction uh, so there's a little bit of a trend there why that one's gone back to where it started who knows it also looks at the rotation has the camera slipped and rotated and I think we can say it happily there's not a lot wrong with that so next step then is to hop over to the left and just say stack the checked pictures they all they're all checked so stack checked pictures um, bingo there we go so what have we got here we have we're not calibrating the background red green and blue channels separately we're not doing per channel background calibration we can investigate those i think if you click one of them it comes up with a menu uh, and away you go this is the stacking mode median kappa sigma clipping uh, average median various other, i don't know what this one does but these ones median kappa sigma and median kappa sigma what they do is if you've got a hot pixel that appears in certain places on different images it tends to eliminate them um, uh, if a satellite trail went sailing past through the image on only one image it will effectively remove it if you do average then that satellite trail is going to remain so uh, I tend to do Sigma or median Kappa Sigma or something along that um, use all available processes good idea so okay we haven't done offsets darks and flats um, so let's just go and hit okay off it goes it's a little bit optimistic with the remaining time I think this is just per image it's actually going quite fast no this is the this is the final picture processing so I've got eight processors chundering away here so that's probably why this is going quite quickly now when the final image is displayed it looks horrendous and it can take you a bit by surprise over on the right here you can see it's auto saving that's a 32-bit TIFF which not many software programs can handle so you don't rely on on that one here now when you look at that it looks horrendous what on earth has happened to that but it's because the levels displayed are completely wrong here we've got a, a an RGB histogram and it shows that the red is horrendously displaced that should be lined up with that so you can play with moving the red uh, and then we can go to luminance and I haven't looked at these for a while so we can play with darkness what happens with that I think you've got to apply and it then starts making changes so there we go it, it's playing with that um, it's a bit of hit and miss trial and error I don't usually bother with this I do all of the processing later so I'll, you can there's a magnified view up here so if you want to look at a star um, is it nice and round yeah that looks fine but I wouldn't worry about this it's easy to cope if it's a monochrome image but this color with the three things separate and separating luminance and colors is far too complicated what I then do is just forget all that and say save picture to file astronomy astronomy tutorial okay so there as I said we forget that one uh, now I usually number things so we know it's M42 so I usually call it version 1 and it's going to save it as a 16-bit TIFF and don't compress it um, embed in adjustments in the saved image but do not apply them 
leave it on that. If you click this one, it will save this horrible screen display image and it'll be a nightmare. So click on that one there. And away we go with save. And if we hunt for it, there it is, down the bottom here. And there we have the final processed image. The noise is reduced considerably. These gas clouds and, and dust clouds are quite smooth and you can't see speckly noise. Um, the stars look reasonably small and tight. Um, here you've got the Running Man nebula sitting over in that direction. But of course the trapezium in the center there is completely blurred out. You won't be able to see any detail in that which is why we take the smaller image as well, the not smaller image, the shorter exposure time images and we look at those. So what I'm going to do is clear all of this, clear list, get rid of all of that. Do you want to save changes? No. And let's take one, two, put those two in which is the the short version and we'll just we won't bother computing offsets because that takes time so we'll go to stack check pictures same method as before and there you have the stack version now you can see that it's um, not nearly as, as blown out as it was in the core but it's very noisy because it's only a five second image that's horribly noisy but we'll need to save that so save picture to file and we'll call it m42 core um, 01 and look at that and there you are and you can easily see if I lose the magnified field of view there are the five main stars of the trapezium not absolutely round but don't worry about it if you look at the other stars nearby they are round and those stars are not round because they're, they're double stars so you've got the, the big fat one is probably a star with another little star near it so it distorts the shape um, you would not get round stars in most of the image but one star being distorted unless it was a double star or triple. I was reading earlier today about a star in Orion that had 11 components which they only just discovered a couple of the stars recently. In theory they say more stars are doubles in the galaxy than singles like our sun but I'm starting to waffle now so I shall stop. So there we go. How to stack things using Deep Sky Stacker. I will do a quick processing uh, video and either attach it to the end of this or, or do it separately. But that's an introduction to Deep Sky Stacker.